Eu tinha tanto ódio do meu pai. I had so much hatred against my father, and I wanted him to die, to see if it would all come to an end. I almost suffocated him to death. Como meu pai Since my father provided services for a major construction company, he traveled to many places. It was during one of his travels that he got involved in another relationship and my mother found out. That was the beginning of hell in my family. This resulted in separation. My father left us to live with the person he had met. She would take out the anger that she felt for my dad on us. So we would get beaten by my mum. We suffered a lot. I don't know what she did. To this day, we still don't know what she did to support us. I remember that my uncles helped us a lot. My grandmother as well. We didn't starve because of our family members. I received no affection. I received no love. I received no understanding. As a child, there was already hatred in me. So I grew up disobedient and misbehaving. I was rebellious and revolted with everything and everyone. At school and everywhere else, I would bring trouble and real trouble. I was a rebellious and disobedient child. My mother couldn't take it anymore. One day, I remember that she put our things in a plastic bag, took us to my father's front gate and said, I am handing your son over to you because I can't take it anymore. That was when my rebelliousness got even worse, because in my mind, I thought, my mum hates me. My father hates me. My father's wife hates me. Everyone hates me. However, that wasn't true. I was the one who hated them. It got to a point in my teens where my dad tried to reprimand me, and I got into a fist fight with my own father. I wanted to kill my dad because I started suffocating him and I really hated him. I wanted him to die, to see if it would all come to an end. Then, my brother had a health issue. My middle brother would see figures in the house. I can say that we went through hell during that time. I grew up on the street. The streets taught me. I learned how to smoke cannabis and to drink. I used to drink a lot. I drank until I couldn't stand up anymore, and I was a teenager. I remember that I would drink until I couldn't stand up anymore. I started taking drugs. Wherever there was anything bad happening, I was there. Street racing, I crashed cars. Motorcycle racing, this led to parties, prostitution, nightclubs. I was in the midst of it all. While I was involved with all that mess, I knew what the word of God was. I knew the church. My grandmother was the one who brought our entire family to the church. It started with her, that little short woman with her handbag under her arm, but who had an enormous faith. Not only me, but everyone in our family has great respect for my grandmother because of her character, which was all about honouring her word. It is interesting to note that whenever we needed anything, it is interesting to note that whenever we needed anything, we would go to church. Let me go there because God will help me. But that didn't solve anything. Just going to church didn't solve my life because I was doing everything that was wrong outside. Apparently, I thought that God would protect me if I went to church as if God was just a common person that accepts wrongdoing. Sometimes, God even answered with a few things, such as when I really wanted to buy a nice motorcycle. I bought it. God allowed me to buy it, and that was when I suffered an accident. I remember that I was going at a high speed. I was going downhill, and there is no other explanation. The motorcycle slipped. In that moment, a few seconds before the accident, as the motorcycle was spinning on the floor, I saw that a car was going to run me over. In those couple of seconds, my life flashed before my eyes. Though I was in the world, I had a certain understanding of the Word of God, because my grandmother always preached salvation to us. 
She would say that Jesus was the only way, the truth and the life. So he is the one who gives us life. In other words, everything that I have ever had or was doing was worthless. I was lost because what's the use of gaining the entire world but losing my soul? So I was lost in that moment. I saw Jesus taking the car from on top of me. I was supposed to have died. I made the decision that I was going to change my life. I went to the church differently because I had already made a decision. I knelt down, gave my life to God and told him that from then on, my life was his. The first thing I did was to get baptized in water. I remember that it was in a plastic pool. That was my baptism. I abandoned my old creature there in a pool made of plastic, a very small one. The church was small, but the altar was enormous. Then I understood what the campaign of Israel was. I didn't just place monetary value in my sacrifice, which wasn't much, but I placed what was still left of myself. I placed the anger that I felt for my father, the hatred for not having had a family. I placed it all. I placed my entire life there. On the day that I went up on the altar, I remember it like it was today. Joy came into my life. I felt light. I didn't cry. I didn't feel anything. But the joy, I was sure of the joy, tranquility and peace that I'd never had before. I went down from that altar different. I went down with a different mindset. With God's thoughts, I wanted to please God. I didn't know how, but I wanted to please God. We can only give what we possess. We can only give what we possess. And I wanted to give God to people because I had received Him. And freely, freely, God gave me His Spirit freely. I just had to surrender. But I surrendered myself completely. For someone who was rebellious and had no family and was full of hatred, I have three wonderful daughters. My marriage is blessed. I met my wife in church. My wife is a jewel that God gave me. He gave me three beautiful daughters. But my battles didn't stop there. We went through a difficult moment when our son died. Our little boy died. But I didn't abandon my faith. In the sacrifice that I made in the beginning, I remember it to this day. I set my life on the rock, which is the Lord Jesus. So I won't abandon my faith for anything. Today, my dad, the one I wanted to beat up, kill or do bad things to, is my best friend. The three boys who had been abandoned are three successful men today. We have our own houses and families. So, God's hand is evident in our lives. My dream is to build a house for God, like David, and I will be able to do it because I can do all things through him who strengthens me. My strength comes from heaven. I will be able to do this. Today I have a company, I have cars, motorcycles. Everything that I dreamt of having one day, now I can't even keep track of them. But I know that it is due to my faithfulness. Everything I went through in the past, I use it as an example. The altar had its doors open to take me in. That is what the hand of God does. It lifts the needy from off the ground. And I am included in this word.